The Edelweiss staff will doubtless be eager to show off their facility to a fellow physician. I have already taken the liberty of sending a letter on your behalf to request a visit. And what of you? I shall be pursuing other avenues. Should you see anything troublesome or improper, simply notify the local authorities. Otherwise, try a little analysis yourself. You know my methods. Apply them. Salutations, madam. I am Dr. John Watson. I was wondering if you've got word of my visit. Yeah, Dr. Watson. We received your letter on the matter. Would it be to see Professor Gygax? At their earliest convenience, yes. I shall try not to take up too much of their valuable time. Wait here, bitte. Mr. and Mrs. Bronson, your girl has made remarkable progress. See? Take a look for yourself. <gasps> My apologies for keeping you waiting, Dr. Watson. Surely you understand how medical work can make one lose track of time. Do not be sorry, Professor. I too know the importance of closely attending to patients. The work hardly stops here. Yet the satisfaction of perfecting the mind compels us to persevere. I take it you welcome many a soul into your establishment? Admissions, yes. Visitors, though? I am curious as to what brought you to the Schwarzes Edelweiss. Word of mouth. An article I read back in London spoke highly of your institution. But rather than taking its word for it, I thought I would see things for myself. My asylum's reputation proceeds it then. Everyone, your attention, please. Guten day. Yes, hi. Hello. The name's Amos Colby, Northwood Detective Agency, Boston. I got questions that need answers. Who's in charge here? What seems to be the matter, Dr. Watson? You can tell me. By Jove, it, it cannot be him. Uh, <clears throat> right. Yes, I was surprised because that man is a, a, a celebrity. Yes, that's it. Very famous, Mr. Colby. I couldn't believe my eyes. No, 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 no. In my line of work, it can't wait. The longer it takes if you to get wish to, the to recuperate, truth, Dr. Watson, you may avail yourself of the guest room. But I have so much more to discuss. Nurse, if you'd be so kind as to escort Dr. Watson to the guest room. Herr Colby, from Northwood Agency. How unexpected. I am Professor Gygax. I would be happy to answer your questions in the examination room. Look, Professor, unless you got any clues as to the whereabouts of... Ah! 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 There is no need to be angry. No one gets neglected in Now, let's not resort to brute force. Do not worry, Herr Colby. My methods are rather more delicate. <laughs> Search him thoroughly. Then take him to the holding chamber. To decide precisely what to do with our guest. Ah, the unmistakable scent of alcoholism. D 
Did you walk through their doors as I did, or did they collect you off the streets? Truncheon, not the typical tool for a nurse. Darn. No way I can get past him without being noticed. There's the guest room. I wonder if Watson was able to speak to Gygax. This sedative worked faster than I expected. Perhaps I ought to train myself. Build up a tolerance. I'd rather not sit in this chair ever again. Locked. I suppose the reception will be guarded anyway. Any chemist would envy the quality of this equipment. The final product, ready to cure madness, or to push one deeper into its grasp. Raw materials used to formulate medicine. With this equipment, they can create any type of medication. Very sturdy. I might borrow it. What was that? Is someone there? command you to free me at once. I'm not sure that's a great idea at the moment. How dare you deny me? I must have my revenge against the Lickspittles upstairs. Fortunately for you, I'm here to stop the very same people. You are? Indeed. But first, I must discover all I can about this institution. Tell me, have you witnessed the arrival of any foreign patients? Tell me? The goal? The impertinence to bark such orders? Please, we don't have time for this. Do you know with whom you speak? I am the great Napoleon! Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte? The one and only. Emperor of the French, first consul of the Republic, leader of la Grande Armée. Once I am free and have exacted my revenge against the guards who ridicule me, I shall rest happy in the arms of my beloved Josephine. Right. Well, I will leave you to your scheming, Emperor. My heart is pierced by Cupid. I disdain all glittering gold. There is nothing can console me but my jolly sailor bold.
a certificate of appreciation from the municipal councillor to Professor Becker for contributions to the development of medicine in Interlaken. A simple toolbox, yet capable of repairing anything. of varying diameters. Interesting. This photo was damaged seemingly by oil. I can make out the names listed here. Looks like it's still operational. Cooking grease. Is this the kitchen dumbwaiter? Painting in a mental institution. Vogel would be delighted. Speech and the cerebellum by S.A. Becker. R.G. Hill, Dr. Connolly. It appears that all the psychiatric classics were banished here. John Sallow, the Tulpa phenomenon. I'm somewhat of an expert already. This should suffice. I'm sure I heard something. This should be enough to avoid unwanted attention, at least from a distance. <laughs> Manufactured and packaged here. This is the same narcotic substance that we found in London. Miss, I... I'll gouge your eyes out and cut off your hands, just like you did to Heidi. I am quite certain you would, but I'm afraid you have me mistaken for someone else. So, I take it your name is Gerda? Who is Heidi? You talk strange. You're going to Hell's Door, aren't you? To where those other funny talkers finally shut up? Hell's Door? To what do you refer? Only Heidi had answers. Go away, pig! I merely... I said go, or you will spend your last moments on Earth screaming. This door won't stop me. The 
garments of several dozen people at least. Fabric burnt in the furnace. A jalabir, a traditional garment from Northern Africa. So you're Heidi. I didn't realize I was on haunted doll watch. Good lord, how unsettling. The damage seems intentional. So this is how they kept the prisoners docile and harmless. An orthodox reliquary commonly found in Eastern Europe, now in a cell halfway up the Alps. This stretcher was disinfected frequently. The stamp on this crate confirms it came from America. That's quite a distance to travel. These are the same crates we found in London. I should take a closer look. A bottle this sturdy doesn't break by accident. Substantial blood loss. One poor soul found another way out. I doubt that one could survive such a journey with this little water. Dirt and sweat. They were locked in here for days, judging by the smell. This is the same design as the one from London. The kidnappers even provided airflow. How generous. This trip was prolonged and perilous. Doors can be open for deliveries.
carriages were backed through these doors, and they began to unload their cargo in secret. Next, the crates were opened, freeing their passengers. Not everyone survived the journey. The dirty, exhausted, and dehydrated prisoners were then herded into cells. All the cells are now empty, and I have not located a morgue. But time to find Hell's Door. Scratches. Something has been moved through here. This seems to be a locking mechanism. The whole thing must be a door. for what they did to Heidi. I believe I have found your friend. Heidi! Oh, poor girl. What did they do to you? Shh. It's all right now. Everything will be all right. Please, Gerda. Now I have found Heidi, I need some help from you in return. Shh, Heidi. We should thank the man, don't you think? Professor Gygax seems to rule this facility with an iron fist. Do you know anything about her? She's sick. She did nasty things to us. Separated me and Heidi just for fun. Before she got here, this place was all right. Tell me all you know about those funny-talking people. We'd hear their screams. The guards would take them down the corridor behind you, and they'd disappear. And the screams would stop. I found Hell's door, the one that made the foreigners silent, remember? How do I open it? Gerda, please, I cannot get inside. You have to tell me how to open it. How can you speak to me like nothing's wrong? Can't you hear? Heidi crying? Look at her! Look! She's suffering. I can't even hear my thoughts over her screams. Poor, poor Heidi. We will fix you. I promise. We will fix you! I shall leave you two to get reacquainted. You're going to be good as new.
Will this help fix your friend? Give it to me. How is she feeling? Everything will be all right, Heidi. Everything. Gerda, I have a couple of questions. Yes, I... <laughs> Dirty little mouth, Gerda. You've said enough already. Uh... She won't speak no more. Now it's only Heidi. You helped me, and I didn't cut out your eyes. So we're even. Now... <laughs> Heidi, there are things I need some clarity on. Ask if you dare, but if I get bored, there will be consequences. I found Hell's Door, but it's locked. Is there a way to get in? Hell's Door? Never heard of it. That's not true. You, Gerda, told me that Hell's Door makes people silent forever. And you believe that snotty little girl? I'll personally ensure that she never dares to speak again! <laughs> Professor Gygax hurt you repeatedly, scarred your body and mind. You are not protecting Hell's Door, you are simply afraid of the consequences were I to enter. I could tap your teeth out with a hammer until you choked on the blood in bits. You could. But then you would live the rest of your life in fear of Professor Gygax. I can make that feeling go away. How? I can stop her. But the key, Heidi, the key to Hell's door is critical to stopping Professor Gygax. And I think you know where it is. Tell him! But you said... And now I say tell him! The professor. She has a special key. Keeps it close and only brings it down when you people go through. Behind those closed doors, those people start to sing. Oh, they sing in so much pain. Gygax. Of course. Thank you, Gerda. Heidi. I must leave. Leave? <laughs> you joke. Nobody leaves the Edelweiss. Now you will be with us forever!
last. You came to your senses. My humble apologies, Emperor. Stem your groveling, Englishman. Of course. You are right as ever, for you see, time is of the essence. The Royalists have risen again, and your darling Josephine needs you. Paris needs you. Mon amour. But the guards upstairs in reception stand in your way. Ha! They will pose no problem for the likes of me. Merci, Englishman. When I return to Les Tuileries, I shall make you a general. Oh, you are too kind, Emperor. Now go. Your freedom awaits. I am coming, Josephine. Watson, over here. Holmes, what are you doing here, and where did you get that outfit? It is unimportant. I require your assistance. What is happening, Holmes? I need an explanation. It's quite simple. I created a distraction so that I could tell you something important, and in turn, I need you to acquire something important for me. How can you call any of this charade simple? Watson, we can discuss this later. Time is of the utmost importance. The kidnapped people may still be here. This is what I know so far. What? You really found all this on your own? Focus, Watson. I need you to find a key. It will be most unique. All the details are in my notes. Logic dictates that Gygax will keep it near her. Once acquired, you must get it to me. Perhaps the kitchen dumbwaiter could be of use. Holmes, I... I can't do this. I'm no spy. Yes, you can, Watson. You are unfailingly dependable. Dr. Watson, visitors are not permitted back here. I am terribly sorry, Mr. Kuntz. After the war, my nerves, I, uh, I fled all that commotion. It is nothing. A patient attempted to escape. He will not get far. Now, if you would like to follow me. Blood in the water. Someone must have washed their hands here recently. What have we got ourselves into, Holmes? The only reason to hang something this harrowing here would be to create another patient. Perhaps I should take this. For all, I hope it won't be needed. Did a child make these? That's a lot of records. The photograph seems recent. A commemorative photo album. Been a while since I've been in one of these. Dr. Watson. Just the man I wanted to see. Professor, I'm surprised you're not trying to catch that SKP. Please, my time is far too valuable. I hope Nurse Kuntz has been taking good care of you. He has certainly kept me out of trouble. Professor, it is time for your appointment with your next patient, Mr. Wolf. Herr Wolf can wait until tomorrow. I wish to speak with Dr. Watson. Uh, as you wish. You still see patients yourself, even as the director of this entire facility? Only the important ones. And yet I rarely get to pick the brain of a man like yourself. 
I think it is time we got to know each other, no? I'm afraid there's not much to know. I'm just an average chap living a rather prosaic life these days. Dr. Watson, those of us who pursue knowledge are anything but average. Now, who are you? I'm a physician in search of a stimulating career. I have patients, yes, but admittedly, I'm more interested in the cutting edge of medical research. So when I read about the Black Eagle Vice and your work on the healing of minds, I simply had to learn more. I suppose my Eagle Vice was always destined to attract other curious minds. But before we continue, I want you to understand one thing. A broken mind can never be truly healed. Ah, I see. So, what exactly do you do here? It is simple. If you cannot fix a person's nature, you must force them to forget it. Surely there are other methods of treatment. How naive. You remind me of a man I once knew, Professor Becker. But we do not speak of him anymore. A colleague? The former director here. One day he realized that Edelweiss had outgrown him and had to leave. Ready, Doctor? I was simply admiring your office, Professor. Apologies. While I am pleased you appreciate its practicality and appearance, we were discussing bigger things. Was my conversation boring you? No, not at all. I, I merely... No, no. I understand full well. You're not seeking conversation. What do you mean? It is obvious. Your mind craves truth, but not in this form. You must witness a practical demonstration if you are to learn. I'm certainly intrigued. Would that be possible? Of course. I propose a journey between the jury of the human brain. You will not leave without being truly enlightened. Kunz, take Dr. Watson back to the courtyard. Then tell the nurses to prepare the operation room and the girl with the doll. Yes, Professor. Our preparations will take a little time. I will come for you soon, Doctor. I hope everything is to your liking, Dr. Watson. Dusty but functional. Oh, we never use that. I think it connects somewhere downstairs. This area is off limits. A patient has escaped. You are Mr. Wolf, am I right? Oh, hello. Who might you be? My name is Dr. John Watson. I wanted to talk with you, if you didn't mind. Ah, Doctor. 
I don't suppose you could help. I, I seem to have forgotten where I am. We're in the Black Edelweiss, Mr. Wolf. It's an asylum in Switzerland, and you are one of its most important patients. But why am I here? That's what I was about to ask you. I can't remember. Sorry, I, I can't remember anything. It's all right. You don't need to push. Try to relax. Let the thoughts come and go. Now, what comes to mind? Mr. Wolf? Oh, hello. Who might you be? We... we just went over this. I'm sorry, but I don't think we've met. We were just discussing this facility, the Black Edelweiss Asylum, and why you are here. That name does sound familiar. Holmes, the things I do for you... Excuse me, who are you? And who's this Holmes fellow? I am Dr. Watson, and Holmes is... well, you could call him my imaginary friend. That's just a little joke, don't mind me. But why am I here, Doctor? Am I sick? I'm sure I can take a look. Excuse me? Uh, who are you? Oh, n never mind. Hello again. You won't remember me, but we've met before. I am Dr. John Watson, and you are Professor Becker. You were the previous director of this facility, the Black Edelweiss. Professor, really? Actually, that name does sound familiar. Wait, wait. Let me write it down. I try to recall memories through writing, but they always feel just out of reach. As a matter of fact, I have more for you to jot down. Oh, yes. Yes, please, anything. Professor Gygax did this to you. She made you forget everything, even who you are. But we will play a trick on her. We will write a letter so that she learns her lesson. Put down what I dictate. Dear Professor Gygax, I bitterly regret that I let my beautiful alpine flower fall under your influence. I see now that you never deserve to sit as the director of the Black Edelweiss. You are not, as you so claimed, the future of the Edelweiss, and you never were. And by the time you make it to my cell, the police will already know the truth of how you came to be director of this asylum. Signed, Professor Becker. There. It's done. Now, hold on a minute. Who are you? 
My name is John Watson. I'm a doctor from London, a veteran of Afghanistan, and I wish to be a writer, though deep down I fear I lack the talent. And presently I am risking my life to help my brilliant detective flatmate in the pursuit of a cult of kidnappers, even as I fear it may destroy him. I'm tired and hungry, and I have not had a good bath in weeks, and yet despite it all, I... I feel alive. Any more questions? Good heavens, sir. You're as mad as they come. One of the patients asked me to deliver this note. It's for Professor Gygax. Thank you, Doctor. Leave it with me. A letter for you. Unbelievable. Kunz, with me. Close, but I don't think this is the key. Mm -mm, this is too small to be what Holmes asked for. Edelweiss relief about two inches in diameter. This must be what Holmes was after. Nothing special about this. A wax cylinder. There is something recorded on it. The writing is mostly gone. Phonetic symbols, perhaps. The tooth of an adult male, likely lost in a beating. Only a couple of days old.
The inside of the cuff is worn. It's been used often. Judging by the remnants of blood and flesh, these instruments were used for dismemberment, utterly inhuman. Dynamo machine provides electrical stimulation for the person in the chair. Full grain leather straps, impossible to escape. A very professional brain dissection. The abyss is the light from the abyss. Oh. Get out of my head. How ingenious. Watson? Holmes, what are you still doing here? Still? I was trying to find more information. Did you think I was just going to sit in my room twiddling my thumbs? I only asked you to find the key. I had everything else under control. Says the man who looks like he saw a ghost. I am fine, Watson. You're hardly fine. You reek of congealed blood and chemicals. What did you see down there? Never mind me. Where's Gygax? I'm afraid she's over there. And I found her like that when I entered, on my word. What? She was our biggest lead. Yet another wrinkle in our investigation. What do we do now, Holmes? Hush. Let me think.
The pencil is buried deep all the way to the brain. Instant death. No traces of blood on her clothes. Must have got on her white overcoat. The patients here wear the same robes. Heidi, how did she... it end up here? We'd better inform the local police about this. You're right, Watson. But first, we need to determine where our case goes next. We've got what we needed, Watson. This conspiracy reaches further than we thought. I don't suppose you've ever been to New Orleans? You are joking. I seldom do. Let's go. There's no time to waste. There is nothing in this world that cannot be explained with logic and reason. Nothing in this world. Holmes? Hmm? You seem troubled. I am not troubled, Watson. I am preoccupied. That place was awful. Inhumane. It would be natural to experience some feelings of shock or fear. Men reduced to gibbering imbeciles, numb beyond recognition, powerless to help themselves. When a doctor does go wrong, they are the first of criminals. They have the nerve and they have the knowledge. That woman did not deserve the title. Such casual cruelty for such selfish aims. I knew another man like that once treated my mother, perhaps even killed her, depending on who you ask. My sincere condolences. In the end, she was just a shadow of herself. The outline of a person I recognize, but lacking all else, she was pushed until she cracked. Should you see me cracking, John, I must ask you to intervene. Nothing compels us to pursue this matter further, Sherlock. We can return to London, report what we have discovered, let more capable hands take over. Alas, there are no such hands. Were we to abandon our quest now, I fear no other would succeed in our stead. We know nothing of what awaits, what dangers lurk in the darkness. Nonsense. We draw nearer to New Orleans with every passing minute, and thus closer to the answers we seek. Those answers, for all their perversity and improbability, will, nevertheless, be the work of men. And that is a work I have studied well. So be it. I know you to be a diligent author, but if I may make one request. Kindly omit my mother and her suffering from your tale. Of course. Thank you, John. 